everyone. So my name is Tikhsh Barzanji, and uh, I'm an artist and illustrator. Um, so I'm going to talk about the journey I've had because it's kind of unusual because most people that's been here has had a, a structure to get here, and mine has been very uh, unpredictable. So I came here as a refugee and from Kurdistan at the age of eight. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of the stuff I've done. So I actually wasn't going to make art at all. I studied physics at Loughborough University. Um, so I was adamant to working at NASA. <laughs> but something unusual happened in 2014. Um, and I became really ill. And I had this thing called migraine vertigo. Um, so my whole pathway kind of just changed by this illness. I was indoors for eight months. Um, and the doctors wasn't sure what the illness was, but they eventually said it's migraine vertigo. And this kind of gave me a... Um, narrowed my pathway to what I wanted to do in life. Um, so the doctor used to tell me to actually just take an activity that you enjoy. So my initial thought was I was very creative in the past. So I started to take photos around London of the, some of the places that I enjoyed. Brutalism was a big part of uh, the journey because I grew up in an estate in Dalston, uh, so I used to go around feeling really sick, but just setting these as a mission every day to take these photos. And people used to come up to me and ask me why I'm taking these like bizarre photos of just the buildings. So from then on, I ran out of places to take photos of. So I decided the best way to go is to create my own work. And to create my own work, I just started to look at colors. I read a lot about color theory and how it creates atmosphere and space. So with that being said, I spent the last six months of 2015 just looking at how color and different, different colors that work together. And I wanted to apply that to the things I looked at in the past with the brutalism, and I started to apply it to the images that I created in the past, was just to manipulate these places to show in a better light. Um, so this was still, to me, was like a therapeutic process. It was nothing serious. I never wanted to show it to anyone. It was just for myself. Um, you know, sometimes I would like post on Instagram, and that was it, and nothing serious. Um, so. From then on, you know, I started to look at color theory in a more in-depth way. Um, so for me, like I said, I wanted to really create my own world and style. But I didn't know how to start that. So I just basically created each piece with whatever I saw as it was, um, added the colors that, you know, really was uh, in relation to how I felt. Um, so I used to just you know, make these pieces and I would just think about how I can use it in the future. And I was wondering the way that I can always manipulate it. So I decided to paint these pieces with acrylics at first and I ended up using oil paint. Um, so I scanned each images and then from scanning it, I started to edit these digitally and uh, this was the outcome from these um, projects that I did. It just, this was just personal pieces working on, you know, how I felt with these surroundings that I took images of. So the first one I called that Tree of Life, just looking at um, having, you know, indoors and outs outdoors at the same kind of space. Um, and the second piece is called Solitude. It's kind of just myself, you know, being in this world where I felt really isolated. And my doctor used to tell me, just imagine a door when you feel really bad, <laughs> just to 
uh, that will escape your bad feelings. So I use a lot of doors and stairs in my work where, you know, that will kind of, you know, show a lot of, it kind of shows a lot of escapism when I was feeling really bad back in 2015 it was. Um, so at this point, this was still for me a therapeutic process. I never thought about being an artist or doing it as a career. And what happened next was kind of bizarre. Um, I had this article come out in 2017, April, and um, it kind of just went, you know, snowballed from there. I would have like hundreds of emails from people just saying to me, you know, we want to work with you, we want to like um, represent you. And I just had to reply to every email and just be like, you know, this is just a therapeutic process. I'm not, you know, I'm not an artist. And, <laughs> you know, every, you know, it was six months of me just trying to think about what I wanted to do. And eventually I decided to, you know, take this on as a career. But at the same time, I wasn't really sure if this was the way to go. Uh, so I joined um, Jelly London in January 2018. And the first job I got from that was the film for Summer Screen at Somerset House, <clears throat> which I used to go there often with friends. So this was the first year they wanted to work with an artist to do the visuals and the posters for the film for Summer Screen. Um, they really wanted to have a theme for that year, and the theme was fantasy. Um, so this is the final piece I made for that, which is came out last year, Film 4. Um, so this was a collaboration between me, Film 4, and Somerset House. And it was really interesting, you know, eventually I got loads of photos from, you know, people just showing me pictures they took around London. And this was kind of the first time where I saw myself as an artist. Um, so, this was interesting because Film 4 were really, you know, open to me working uh, with whoever, you know, my ideas and really surreal pe ideas. But at the same time, Somerset House, you know, had a lot, they were saying they had a lot of an older generation that viewed their work. So, it was all about having that balance uh, to make sure, you know, everyone's on board. So... I'm just going to show you the final piece, I mean, not the final piece, but the piece that I always wanted to have as, this, as the poster, but they eventually Somerset House didn't agree with it. So this was the piece I wanted to use. <laughs> so a lot of the, they were just um, saying it was a bit too complex for the, the viewers. So I just wanted to show that so you can see, you know, the, the process, you know, it doesn't always end up how you want. And secondly, <clears throat> from this point on, I had, you know, a couple of little shows in Taiwan. And eventually, I wanted to just focus on the people instead of the spaces. I just wanted to look at the people within these spaces and how they interact with the, you know, the situations they're in. And I really, you know, just... I. I sp in the period when I was really ill, I, st I spent two years just studying people, taking notes and drawings, and, you know, I used to go to a theater on my own and just taking drawings of people, how they act and how they talk, and I actually use this in my work right now, but I don't think, you know, I never really spoke about it. This is the first time I'm going to actually, I just announced it. So, uh, I kept the identities anonymous because I wanted to, people to focus on the interactions more than the, you know, the race, so that's why I've kept the identity, um, you know, anonymous for the whole, most of the, you know, all of my work that I've been working on. Um, so this is the works, you know, that came out of it. It's a series I made for myself. Um, so each piece was moments in my life where, you know, interactions I've had with people and the colors in it are all like found objects. Uh, and it's, you know, the green. Uh, that's a found object I found in 2014, back in 2000, um, sorry, in Camden. I found this, you know, on the street, and I, you know, kind of stuck with me. And the colors in the lighting, the reds and the oranges are all just moments where I've had 
where the lights have come into my room and friends' rooms and just little moments I've kept and I've kind of just brought it all together. And then eventually I carried on the series and just played out with colors and, you know, situations that I've encountered. And this kind of led to what I'm doing right now. So <clears throat> I was in Miami in 2018 last year, and a friend of mine was just asking me whether I've ever had a, um, a show or I've had any, like, um, like, clients in America, and I was just like, no, I don't really get work in America. And at this moment, when I, my friend was talking about this, I looked at my email, and I had an uh, email from Rockefeller from New York. And it was, it was bizarre because at the same time where we were sat, Kanye West was approaching us. I don't know, it was just a weird situation. <laughs> and um, so I was thinking about my whole life at that moment, and I'm thinking about how it's only been 11 months I've been doing all this work, and you know, everything has moved so fast. And I looked at the brief, and I was, couldn't enjoy the holiday anymore, because all I was thinking about is going home to work on this project. So they have this big project next to the Empire State Building, uh, they call it, it's called the Rose Hill. It's not finished yet. They're still building it. It's a luxury apartment. Um, so they wanted me to just illustrate certain areas of uh, the New York and how, you know, people interact with it. And I'm just going to show you some of the pieces I created of uh, those elements. So the first piece is, um, this is just a, uh, is a really famous library that's in New York. And... You know, just they really wanted to be really surreal, so that was something I'm always up for because I like surreal stuff. And um, yeah, so the second piece is the um, Gramercy Theatre. Um, so they just wanted, to sh and also they wanted the colours to really blend with, um, you know, the whole theme of the building, which was you know a lot of navy, a lot of bronze. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to carry on showing you the other pieces. <clears throat> this I've never shown these pieces, but these are. This is the Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, this is the second piece, Italy, where you can get loads of like nice Italian food. There's this big supermarket. Um, so basically, this is to you know, I just wanted to show you some of the projects I worked on, and I have to apologize. I'm gonna have to bring Georgia Smith back into this. Um, so Georgia Smith, at the moment I, when I was finishing that project, she hit me up and wanted to do some visuals for her live shows. Um, so I said, yeah, why not, let's do it. And so I just turned my you know, process of painting, scanning, and then turned into animation. Each, you know, the animation took about f eight hours to make 30 seconds, so this was her, for her live show. Um, so to, this is actually gonna be shown at Glastonbury. Her show is gonna be on Friday, so if you wanna see it, I'm just gonna play you a part of it, a clip of it, so you can see. Yeah, so that was... <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to end this with saying that I only started this journey at 27, so I'm 29 now. So I just wanted to say that you can start this at any age, and I hope this you know, inspires you wherever you are, where, wherever you're doing, that you can always make a change. And you know, this is just the beginning for me, so... Thank you for so much for having me here and have a good night. Yeah.